Hi there, and welcome to the weekly Asylum and Immigration Reform Update, where I share with you five recent stories of interest to asylum seekers and those who want to stay current on immigration news. This week, we're discussing the Biden administration's new asylum policy has significantly reduced the number of migrants eligible for asylum in the U.S., with a lower pass rate for initial screenings and ongoing lawsuits challenging the policy's validity. Immigrants contribute to job creation by expanding the workforce, stimulating demand and displaying a higher propensity for entrepreneurship compared to native-born Americans, challenging common misconceptions. Republicans' attempt to impeach DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas is criticized for conflating actions and omitting context. Asylum seekers from South America were deceived and abandoned after being transported from Texas to California, leading to potential criminal charges and investigations. Canada's Supreme Court upheld an agreement enabling Canada to reject asylum seekers at the U.S. border, despite concerns about refugee rights and calls for the agreement's termination. I'm Brian Manning. I used to be an asylum officer with the government, but now, as an asylum lawyer, well, I help immigrants all over the country to secure their future in America through asylum. It's my pleasure to bring you asylum and immigration reform updates each week right here on the Political Asylum Lawyers YouTube channel. Okay, let's get to the news. First up, the Biden administration's new asylum policy has led to a significant drop in the number of migrants allowed to apply for asylum in the U.S. Under the policy, people who travel through a third country and fail to seek protection there are presumed ineligible for asylum. The pass rate for initial screenings has plummeted from 83% to just 46%. Critics claim the policy is a revamped version of a Trump-era initiative that also made certain individuals ineligible for asylum. The Department of Homeland Security argues that without this policy, border crossings could surge, potentially straining local resources and communities. A total of 8,195 asylum seekers have been affected by the new rules, with 88% finding their asylum prospects limited. There are lawsuits pending over this new asylum policy. There's a pretty decent chance it could be struck down, as happened with the similar Trump-era policy. And next up, for update number two. Contrary to common belief, immigrants do not take away jobs from others, but rather contribute to job creation. According to a recent study, immigrants not only increase the available workforce, but also stimulate the demand for goods and services, resulting in the growth of employment opportunities. Of interest, immigrants are 80% more likely to establish businesses than native-born Americans, ranging from small ventures to large corporations. These enterprises go on to generate new employment opportunities. This entrepreneurial inclination remains consistent across various countries of origin. These findings challenge the traditional narratives surrounding immigration, suggesting that instead of diminishing job prospects, immigrants enhance the job market, leading to increased opportunities for everyone. Therefore, it is important to shift our perspective and recognize immigrants as significant contributors to economic growth and the generation of employment. All right, time for our third immigration update. Republicans push to impeach DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas over alleged dereliction of duty is facing scrutiny. A preliminary report calling for Mayorkas' investigation over the border crisis has been criticized for conflating actions taken by Biden and other officials with those taken by Mayorkas and for omitting crucial context. It's suggested that the impeachment call is primarily driven by House Republican leadership's attempt to appeal to its conservative base. The solution lies in investing in humanitarian protections and addressing the system's resource imbalance rather than political posturing. As of now, there's a backlog of over 1.3 million asylum applications and immigration court delays spanning up to five years. And moving right along, update number four. Asylum seekers from South America were misled with job and housing promises before being transported from Texas to California by a company that was hired by the state government of Florida. Migrants were asked to sign English documents they didn't understand. Upon arrival in Sacramento, they were abandoned without shelter or work, contrary to the assurances they had received. The migrants are now receiving assistance from nonprofits in Sacramento. The California Attorney General's office is considering criminal liability charges, including kidnapping and false imprisonment. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has not commented on the allegations. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has likewise sent asylum seekers from Texas to Democrat-run cities in other states as a way to make a political statement. And finally, our fifth immigration update for this week. America isn't all that bad of a place for asylum seekers, said Canada's highest court. The Canadian Supreme Court upheld a 2002 agreement, known as the Safe Third Country Agreement, which allows Canada to turn back asylum seekers at the U.S. border, with the idea being that if you first come to the United States, you should seek asylum there, and thus, don't need protection in Canada. 
Critics argue the agreement violates the rights of refugees due to the U.S.'s alleged poor treatment of asylum seekers. They hoped the court would strike it down, ending the arrangement. However, the court held that the Canadian government's use of the agreement was constitutional. Advocacy groups like Amnesty International expressed disappointment, saying the decision may put lives at risk. They urged Canada's government to abandon the agreement, arguing that the U.S. is not a safe country for refugees. The court's decision came amid a growing number of irregular border crossings into Canada from the U.S. And that wraps up this week's immigration news. If you want to win asylum in the United States, then you should call my office today. That number is 713-352-1593. We help people all over the country, so it doesn't matter where you are. Call us now to schedule an asylum strategy session so that we can help you secure your future in America through asylum. Again, I'm Brian Manning, and it's an honor to serve you in your immigration journey.